some upcoming market risks that we, the investors, need to pay attention to. So we spent some extra time to make this bonus videos for our viewer. So as always, subscribe if you like this video. Let's jump straight in with news from India. S&P Global Analyst predicts that due to COVID getting worse, India's oil demand will be cut by 760,000 barrels per day in May and 830,000 barrels per day in June and 360,000 barrels per day in July. So global demand for oil is expected to drop, which is going to impact oil prices. Next up is the unexpected CPI that we mentioned in our weekly video. Here's a little more insight with April's retail sales data that just came out. Overall, retail grew 0% and core retail sales dropped 0.8%. Retail sales and core retail sales are basically reflecting the consumer's desire to spend money and buy stuff. Core retail drops some categories that are highly volatile. So if these numbers are bigger, means people are spending more money. If these numbers are small or even negative, that means people desire to buy is decreasing. All right, so here's a weird situation we're in. We know that the CPI signaling inflation is spiking up, and that is due to uneven growth in prices such as food, energy, and used cars. Not everything is spiking up. So you are saying if less and less people are buying, how are prices rising? That's what I'm saying. If let's say we have a large scale of buying desire that is pushing the prices up, doesn't it make more sense to justify or understand these numbers? So actually, the only bank gave a closer estimate to retail sales, Bank of America, gave a negative value for the overall retail and every other institutions expect on average about 1% for retail growth. Bank of America's explanation is that for low income families with less than $50,000 a year, their card spending grew 23%, but the high earners with annual income over 125,000, their card spending only grew 8.3%, which is declining. So rich, People are not spending, but poor people are buying. What money are they spending to buy? They are spending the stimulus and the savings from past stimulus packages. What happens once they spend all the stimulus money? The question everyone is wondering is, can the retail sales grow then? Exactly. If retail stays weak and inflation keep on rising with the cost of goods going up, will people start to wonder if we are relieving the great inflation of 1970? The unemployment continues to rise, average income continues to decline, and cost of goods continues to increase. Sounds like hyperinflation. This is worrisome. On one hand, the retail is lacking momentum, high income groups are not spending, and low income groups spend the checks from stimulus on food, travel, or whatever it may be. And that is it, really. Then, the economy will end up waiting for rich people to start spending to bump the retail numbers up to continue to support the economic recovery. Which is why we are seeing all this chaos in the market. There's also another set of data that we can support what we've been talking about. On the screen is the major country CPI and central bank interest rates. On the left, on the left half, a country with CPI less than 2.5%. And on the other half are the country with CPI over 2.5%. This shows very uneven inflation rate. Only Japan is in negative CPI territory, all the way up to Korea with 2.3%. The rest of the left side countries are maintaining the inflation relatively low. But here's the tricky part. On the right side, US is basically inflating as fast as developing country. We are seeing the highest from Argentina with 46.3. And looking at countries on the right side, Russia, Brazil, Turkey, and Argentina are all starting to raise rates, and the US is still chilling on rates. So to summarize, we see the developed country with mature economy on the left side, except for Indonesia are all maintaining relatively low inflation. And on the right side, US being developed with mature economy is in the same inflation status with developing country. Are we developing? Because I can't tell. Do we have a high population growth rate? Do we depend on export? Absolutely not. So this is why the Fed has to come out and say this inflation is temporary and will come down with time. I don't think they can say anything else. 
because you can't have the inflation level of a developing country, that means you really are printing more cash than you should. That would be a big slap in the face for the Fed's monetary policy since the start of COVID. So no matter what, they have to say the inflation is transitory. But we can also think of this April retail sales slowdown confirming Fed's retail forecast for the next few months. The reasoning behind Fed's temporary inflation theory could be that April's spike is a result of recent supply chain issues. Suez Canal, forget chip shortages. We're short on a lot of raw materials. And uneven unemployment causing reduced supply all could drive up the short-term CPI. So the global uneven inflation is very odd. The only thing we can do is wait for more economic data and follow interest rate statement from the Fed. Yup, and the street will be trading on those policies as well. That's why the current market is messy going back and forth near the top. So besides uneven global inflation, what's next? We need to pay attention to federal debt limit expiring on July 31st. If the Congress can't raise the limit or get an extension on the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2019 that suspended the debt limit, the U.S. government will run out of borrowing capacity. So every year, the Treasury brings in revenue for the government spending. And if that spending is more than revenue, which is also known as a deficit, the government will issue debt to cover the deficit. Yep. Anyway, the government still has extraordinary measures. It can use after the expiration on July 31st, as long as it is still under the debt ceiling. Basically, the way it works is it can choose to not fully invest in federal employees' retirement plan funds to create more space under the debt ceiling. But it has only about 100 to 200 billion rooms to use. Even though, according to Bipartisan Policy Center, The X date, which is the estimated date that Congress would have to act or Treasury could run out of funds to pay for its obligation is sometime after October 1st. But we all know the market. It likes to price in the events months ahead, which means we're expecting decent volatility before July 31st deadline, especially since Congress will go on recess for all of August until mid-September. Another important one is the government fundings and appropriation deadline of September 30th. If the Congress can pass legislation to fund the government before the deadline, the government will shut down. This will delay a lot of decision-making and payouts to companies with government contracts, such as Palantirs, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. The majority of Treasury's revenue depends on the economic recovery, which depends on the stimulus plan. The Democrats want to use budget from fiscal year 2022 to fund the next round of stimulus. And usually that will cause another round of bipartisan fights in Congress and will cause uncertainty and fear in the market. I agree. And fundamentally, the U.S. should stop printing more cash. Let's look at some data here. Congress have approved about $4 trillion already for the pandemic recovery. And Biden's infrastructure plan will cost about another $2 trillion. Keeping the printer running will continuously weaken the dollar. Yep, and if you look at the U.S. dollar share of global foreign exchange reserves, it has dropped to 25-year low, around 59%. Foreign investors are lowering their holding in U.S. debt from 2014 35% level to now below 25%. Recently, the Fed has been buying up most of the U.S. debt. But of course, the dollar is still the main international currencies. But that trend is starting to break as U.S. lost to euro in global payment currency for the first time in seven years. So like you said, if we look at the dollar from a global currency clearing perspective and think about why countries are starting to issue their own digital currency, you'll start to notice that countries believe that by issuing their own digital currency, they can stop relying on the dollar for foreign exchanges clearance. Right. But again, U.S. dollar will still remain the major international currency. But it is interesting to start noticing trends and actions. If you remember not too long ago, some whales back on VIX, the fear index will go to $30. Yeah, actually, I remember. And the short positions on VIX are decreasing recently. In the past five years, when short option positions on VIX are decreasing, we have seen S&P pullbacks. 
And it doesn't seem like the market is pricing that in yet. But just because the past five years are like that doesn't mean that history will repeat itself. But this is certainly another thing to look out for. Definitely. Back to government shutdown. I just want to mention, even though government had shut down during Obama and Trump presidency, but that was because they both had split Congress. And this time, Biden has both houses. So a shutdown is very unlikely. Good point. But in case it does, we need to pay close attention to utilities, real estate, and national defense. Basically, any sector that has government contracts will be impacted and investors will likely rotate their cash to gold or Bitcoin to hedge. Yep, but we want to stress that this will happen after the shutdown, not before. Don't mess up the order. And also, government shutdown means important economic data delays such as monthly PMI, and investors will be trading blindly, so market will go through turbulence for sure. Oh yeah, and it will be hard to analyze Fed's monetary policy. Just a reminder at the end, the potential risks we mentioned above have not been priced in by the market. So you can take down the important dates and make adjustments accordingly. 